welcome all of you once again. It's Backpack Hunt. Still, we have many things to bring you about Egypt. Well, here in Cairo, we have many beautiful sites. And these places, actually, we can describe these places as open-air museums. And this is located in many different sites, like, for example, the religious complex, in which you move around and you found many beautiful sites to visit and many beautiful churches, of course, in addition to the famous mosque over there. But here at this time, I want to tell you more about El Moaiz Street because El Moaiz Street is another beautiful site that we call it an open air museum. You will move around and each place or each step, you will see something unique around. Of course, in addition to the beautiful atmosphere surrounding. So let's find out together more about the Moaiz Street and more about the important stops where you can enjoy your tour. Moaiz Street is recognized as one of the oldest streets in Cairo, with the most beautiful ancient architectural wonders in the Islamic world, going back to Al Moaiz Ridin Allah from the Fatimid dynasty. Stretching one kilometer long, the street is riddled with historical buildings, mosques, houses, and other Islamic buildings. And of course, one of the most popular places over there is the 1,000 year old Al Hakim Mosque. It is one of the most interesting places to visit. As we can see, this street includes several historic places that reflect different periods of time. Each building here has its unique design and architecture, reflecting different eras. One described this street as an open-air museum.
area here is unique. In addition, of course, to the gates surrounding the whole area, especially that these gates were built for a reason and not haphazardly. It is interesting to learn some more information about these gates. Cairo was called the citadel or fort. It looked like a square and it was surrounded with the Bahr al-Azam or the Great Sea from the east, the Gulf from the west, from the north gardens extended to Mataraya and the mount of Gabal el guishi from the south. When the Fatimid reign settled in Cairo under the leadership of al muaz al din Allah, it was called Cairo of al muaz because they decorated its four suburbs with luxurious buildings, delightful spots and gardens. This increased its delightfulness and beauty, and it was the settlement of rulers and princes. Al Fustat city was big and important due to plenty of buildings, many people and much of the lively means. That is why Gauhar Sakhali was so keen on it. So he established the fortified gates and installed them around in the four sided walls.
Some Western visitors to Egypt may initially have very little interest in seeing Islamic monuments, but on first sight, those with any interest in architecture will be awestruck by the beauty and design of these Islamic medieval buildings. The most important thing here is not only to learn about the history of these mosques, but to understand the reason behind building each of them. Because Egypt has seen many influences from many different numbers, ruling empires, including the Abbasid, the Fatimid, Ayyubid, Mamluk, and Ottoman, and others. Cairo specifically is a city of the world. Egypt offers a fair overview of mosque styles. Furthermore, its mosques date from the earliest periods of Islam up to, and of course including modern varieties. and particularly Cairo, are actually complexes that include a number of other structures that may or may not be found attached to other mosques. For example, 
Many mosques include an Islamic school facility called a madrasa. Others may have mausoleums and tombs, and even hospitals, along with other structures within the complex. Mosques may be located in many different places and some strange places as well. Sulaiman Aga Salahdar Mosque is one of the beautiful designs with a unique architectural design. Built in 1839, it has some of the decorative features of the Muhammad Ali's time. The spatial configuration combines both Ottoman and local features, with a courtyard surrounded by arcades covered by shallow domes, and a sanctuary with four marble columns that support a central lantern. The mosque's design accommodates both the interior qibla orientation and the existing context of the street by progressively increasing the thickness of the wall of the street facade, an adjustment technique first employed in the mosque of Al Akmar. And the Sabil, which is next to the Kutab instead of underneath it, flaunts a facade decorated in an Ottoman Baroque fashion and strongly recalls that 
of the Sabil Kutab built by Ismail Pasha, facing the madrasa or the school of Al Nasir Muhammad at Bain al Qasrin. Usually for those who are interested in architecture, this is one of the most interesting places to stop at. Because each of these places has something to tell about the era that it belongs to. And most of the time when you enter the mosque, you can find out more about the era to which it belongs by just looking at its design, architecture and the minaret as well. Because each era has its own designs and each era has its own style that makes it unique on its own. Well, that was all for today. Thank you all for joining us. Next time we'll be back and more about Egypt.